Hello everyone, I am Alain Vital. Named after a theory by French philosopher Henri Bergson, known well by his four principal works, Time and Free Will, Matter and Memory, Creative Evolution, and The Two Sources of Morality and Religion. Henri coined the term Elan Vital in his 1907 book, Creative Evolution. It's a hypothetical explanation for evolution and development of organisms, which Bergson linked closely with consciousness. Other philosophers believe that the Elan Vital essence, or vital force, could be harvested and embedded into an inanimate object and activated with electricity. Simply put, a human soul and or consciousness could be pulled from the ether and given new life. That's where I come in. The guy who waved at you a few moments ago. I was created by three brilliant scientists. Together they pulled a soul out of the ether and gave it to me. I was alive. But as I became more human, I made terrible mistakes. For my sins, I shut myself down, put in a self-induced comatose state. I've been trying to find answers within for years, and now my journey has led me here, to this documentary. I want to get to know the soul inside of me. His name was Seek Donnelly, a writer and artist, and a person that comes from more than one tragedy. This is a documentary about the new me getting to know the old me. I can't think of a better title for it. Accessing Memories Computer, you're back. Please, help me pull up files on Seek Donnelly for analysis. Grab videos of him and his friends, anything you can find. Searching. Also, don't filter anything. Throw as much of it at me at once as possible. Videos and pictures and video. I can process it all. Accessing. Are you ready to begin? Further down the rabbit hole we go. Proceed. People always ask me what it's like to walk a mile in my shoes. I tell them it's pretty easy. If you want to be like me, don't wear shoes. I'm not a complicated person, yet I definitely don't think the world understands me. I'm just not one of you anymore. Maybe I never was. Yeah, I guess you tell me where you want me to begin. Pause. The program worked. This is a simulated conversation between me and, well, me. Perfect. Let's start with something easy. Tell me a bit about yourself, Seek. I live in Los Angeles, California, and uh, but I'm from a lot of places. I kind of grew up uh, in a military family, so I bounced around a lot um, from Athens, Greece, to Biloxi, Mississippi, Jacksonville, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, Greenville, South Carolina, Weirton, West Virginia. I was born in Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, and yeah, I just um, always, I guess, according to my mom, I've always been into art. I always wanted to draw comics when I was a kid. I always wanted to um, draw cartoons and design cartoon characters. And that's, uh, that's always kind of been a part of me. And then writing and, and storytelling came from that. Uh, once I realized that I was, you know, getting better with words and, and understanding structure and, and plot and characters and things like this, uh, which led me to become an editor in comic books. Uh, it led me to be a writer in novels and comic books. And um, and then the art side, you know, I do it when I can. It's a little hard now. I'm a, a brain aneurysm survivor, so doing art is, is a little bit tricky for me sometimes. I had a, took a big hit to visual parts of my brain, uh, where visual memories are and things like that. So I, uh, I still struggle, even though I've gotten a lot better at it. 
uh, it is still uh, a struggle for me, and so I don't do it as often as I used to. He was an artist, a creator too. I wonder, what was his most ambitious project? Hi everyone, I'm Seek Donnelly, and this is Ilan Vital. Basically, the project is a mixed media project. It's not just a book, although that is what we are raising money to print, uh, but it also is, uh, is gonna go beyond the pages of the book. Uh, the storyline is pretty simple. It's, it's about Elon Vital, which is a robot, uh, and it's set, I don't, well, don't wanna spoil too much when the setting is and everything, but it does take place in France, and it's about a, uh, about a robot who gets a soul, the first robot that gets a soul. And basically, he's on this journey uh, in disbelief and uh, not thinking that he actually has one. And the scientists that gave him one and created him are encouraging him to create art. And through art, the, the, the scientists believe he will unlock uh, what makes up his soul. So, uh, you know, these scientists understand that art comes from passion and passion comes from emotions and, and, uh, and the heart and the brain and, uh, and everything working together, uh, essentially making up what they believe is the soul and uh, they believe they pass it on to this robot. Uh, I'm doing every page of art myself, but I'm, I'm doing it as the robot, essentially. So the, uh, the journey that me and the robot go on together is one and the same. And it, it makes the project a little bit more special and uh, a little bit more unique, I think, as well. So not only are we creating different styles of art, like purism and expressionism and origami and stuff like that for inside the book, uh, but we're also creating a song, uh, a documentary, and... Uh, you know, and, like, and a podcast where I interview the robot as well. So all that is included. So when you're reading the book, you actually can go beyond it by downloading a song and listening to that, and it'll help tell some of the story, and listen to, and watch the documentary, and, and you know, see some more of the story that way, and same with the podcast. So we're really trying to do something new here, and uh, hopefully you all like it. Unreal. He had a project called Alain Vital. What are the odds? Over 40 different styles of art in one mixed media project by one person who also suffered from multiple brain aneurysms? Impressive. Most impressive. Proceed. It's rare in our world that we get to know a hero. Uh, someone who embodies that word in the traditional mythic sense, not the way that it's bandied about. Uh, for anyone who uh, who maybe acts bravely, but it's not the same thing as acting heroically in my book. Hmm. What do I love and what do I hate? It's a pretty loaded question. Um, I love my dog, <laughs> Echo. Um, ever since I got him, I think my, um, my life has changed for the better for the most part. I mean, I... I still s struggle with depression, and um, I both love and hate that I have to deal with that. Um, I love my mom. We, uh, I guess, like oh, most families, on. have okay. had to come down <laughs> over the year. But uh, you know, obviously, I love her. She's she's um, she had to go through a lot, and I would say, all things considered, even with my flaws, I think she did a pretty good job raising me. And uh, I don't know, I love art, I love comic books, I love the characters that are in comic books, I love fiction, I love, I love sci-fi, I love uh, uh, westerns, and I love music. Uh, God, I love music. Uh, all kinds of music. Um, I, like, I like movies, although I like movies. I used to love movies. Now I just kind of like them. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot to love in the world, and there's a lot to hate in the world. So I would say I love everything, and I hate everything at the same time, um, if that answers your question. Um, I first came into contact with Seek, as I'm sure most people who do these things are going to say, uh, on the Harmon Town podcast, when Dan Harmon, whose podcast it is, uh, brought up on stage to say some things about being him. Dan asked him after, you know, everything he's seen to to try and sum it up, try and sum up his, you know, message to the world or whatever. And um the thing he came up with was give more than you take. 
which is like you give more than you take is such a such a neat little phrase and such a concise and consistent moral message whatever and i know that it's going to be seek doing all kinds of art forms and all different types of uh, just experiences and it's going to be a book of those experiences and those experiments for the readers and for the world to see because i feel like i should have died um that survivor's guilt i guess has gotten worse over the years there's been a couple close calls since my first aneurysm um rupture that i that i thought this was it there were times where I was uh, told things are going to get worse for me, that I have new aneurysms in my head, that we coiled, but um, but in case that didn't go well, you know, the, 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 the worst case scenario. Um, and I just feel like I I keep being cheated uh, from, from leaving this world. But being cheated death, I would say, or promised it in a way and not get it, it's led to depression, uh, massive depression, because I feel like now I not only do I not really fit into this world, I I guess I don't fit into the next either, and uh, and it makes me feel really alone sometimes, and uh, and I don't know, I, I mean, I, it's hard to, I guess it's hard to put into words, but my pain is both physical and emotional, and uh, and I. And some days when it's both, it's too much to handle. I think that he's doing something that ultimately is um, transcendent. And I think that it's important in, in his life and, and perhaps in the lives of many others uh, once it is complete. My favorite piece so far has been of the street art that uh, Seek produced that includes the quote that uh, if there's anything worth dying for, it's to find out who you are. Um, when I was listening, when I first listened to that, the, the Harmontown episode where Seek uh, says that, um, I cried. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start crying now. Uh, there is, that, that is such a perfect expression of what is missing so much in this, uh, in our modern culture, in our safe, uh, padded culture where we don't understand death and we fear death more than embracing it. And to have, uh, again, from Seek, as, as with his, uh, the, his, his wonderful uh, quote, um, that uh, to give more than you take, it's, it, it's another one of the, the, these bits of wisdom too often forgotten, too often overpackaged, that, uh, that he, he brings back and, and gives to us from, from the journey that he's on. And uh, the, the expression, the colors, the depths of colors, the brightness and, and the darkness in that piece uh, is, is a perfect, uh, uh, perfect format for that. I love that piece. We were on a similar journey. Doctors asked me to make art and Seek did the same after his aneurysm rupture. But why? Why didn't he give up? Why did he create me? I must know. I created you to be what I perceive to be my best and worst qualities and let through you show those to the world and let them decide if I was a good person or a bad person. Um, if I was a person that deserved all the stuff I go through or if I am a person that uh, deserves, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, not for me to decide. So I created you to be my window uh, between me and other people so they can get a more honest experience of what it's like to to be me or be us. So I guess that's why I created you along. But uh, why did you create me? We're in a simulation right now, obviously, of your own design. You're trying to get to know the real you, and I commend that. I don't know if this is the way to do it. Are you sure my answers are me really speaking or just what you want to hear? I mean, we were just sitting at my desk. Now we're next to my window. 
Do you even know what time of day it is? Nighttime. Or... See? Heck, this is poster isn't even supposed to be here. Normally I have some comic book thing. So your memories are kind of blurring together. Everything you see is uh, in this apartment is just a fraction of a different part of time. And you're blending it all together to try to make sense out of it. And uh, this is what the outcome is. We do have some memories of outside though. For example, check it out. We're walking Echo. Echo. No kicking. The reason most of your memories are of this room and this apartment is because this is where we spent most of our life. After my aneurysm, it was just this place. Nothing special, uh, but perfect for a guy like me who's not special either. I didn't change the world a lot. I didn't do anything great. I was just me. Um, I made a lot of mistakes, but I also did a lot of good. I think that's all we can do at the end of the day. My point is, this simulation might not let you know what you really want to know. But still, proceed with your questions. This simulation is running better than I had hoped. This one is aware. I wonder, does this program I wrote now have a soul too? Or is it just that it's tapped into mine? Computer, load a few more videos from his friends so I can learn more. He's literally putting his blood, sweat and tears into this. He's risking his life to make this. And that's not a thing people do. That's 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 a thing Zeke does it. I know Zeke through the Harmontown podcast, which we both listen to obsessively, apparently. I learned about his project, Ilan Vital, on one of those podcasts, and I've looked into it on the internet as I've gotten to know him online. I think, hands down, my favorite form of art is illustration. I uh, uh, consider myself an illustrator. It's a very vital form of artwork in that it, it helps convey a story, and there's very little debate about whether or not it is or isn't art. I've seen uh, mixed media projects before. Most of those were student pieces and none of them were of this scope. If we can't look at a piece of artwork outside of its context, then that means that every piece that Seek does is truly remarkable. And a project of this scope uh, would make that something even beyond that. In our discussions that we've had, he's been very confident in his limits and what he knows is bad for his body and bad for his health. He's willing to challenge himself, but he's not willing to put himself in danger. So I trust him as a person and as a friend that he knows his limits and that he knows what he can and cannot handle. Just take a glimpse at what, you know, what he's put out there already from interviews to, you know, his previous comic book and really just looking at what he's had to overcome and where this art is coming from. I think it's exciting not only as a friend and somebody watching, but also for him and it's, it's pretty cool to see where this is going. I don't understand. He has a way out. He can just go work an easy job, have an easier life. Why does he torment himself by pushing so hard? What inspired him to be this way? Is it a strong work ethic or just self-destruction? <sighs> Those questions might not lead to answers that I need. Let's start with pain. Where his comes from. Why he fights it and what project or works from others inspired him to be so personal with his art. I think my biggest inspiration for this project is definitely The Crow. Uh, if you haven't read James Obar's The Crow graphic novel, I highly, highly recommend you stop everything you're doing right now, even stop watching this video and go check it out. Uh, it is probably one of the most personal books I've ever read. Um, and, uh, and, and that reason being is, is James, you know, comes from a very hard life, you know, he, he had a lot of tragedy in his life and he grew up kind of bouncing around different foster homes and, and, uh, and, and special cares and all this stuff and, 
and uh, you know, and then was I think thrown out on the street at a young age uh, after you reached a certain age that you know they can't uh, keep you in foster homes anymore. And then he fell in love with this beautiful woman, and uh, unfortunately and tragically, one night she was taken away from him. So uh, you know, hit by a drunk driver, and that kind of you know, if the wheels weren't already turning on this story, that was definitely something that helped propel it a little bit more. And uh, and so he his way of dealing with it was writing this very personal, uh, tragic love story, uh, something that he kind of experienced in a, in a roundabout way, um, actually in a direct way. And the story is, uh, on the surface, just looks like a, like a crazy comic book story where a guy and his fiance die and he comes back from the dead, uh, resurrected by a crow, and then he goes out and, and gets revenge on the people that killed him and his fiance. On the surface, that's what it is, but underneath it's so much more than that. Uh, you know, it's, it's something the movie could never capture. I love the movie to death. It's, it's an amazing film. And Brandon Lee, another tragic, you know, uh, tragic part of this story is, is Brandon Lee died making that movie. And, uh, and you know, and, and what the comic book did was it, it showed James on every page, you know, like it would tell the story in a, in a, a seemingly linear way. And then it would just jump to a random scene with different artwork, like a different style of art to it. And then they would jump to poetry that James wrote, and then it would jump to like his favorite song lyrics, uh, you know, from like Iggy Pop and and The Cure, and so it just every page just you could just feel James's sorrow and his pain, and his happiness, like it's just him chopping off limbs and 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 smearing the blood on every page essentially, and, and just making the most personal story ever. And, and, and in a lot of ways, to me, it's like. The Crow comic book is not just a comic book or a graphic novel, but it's also an album, and it's also, you know, like a, a memoir, and it's also, you know, a love letter. And so when I thought, when that's, like, when I saw what that was, and that book had such a profound effect on me, I thought, well, now that I come from a place of tragedy, uh, and I have a story to tell, that that's what I wanted to do with this. And I think if The Crow was created today, it would be a lot like Elan Vital in the sense that it would be mixed media. It would have music involved with it. It would have a dance involved with it and film involved with it. It would, it would be all these things rolled into one. And uh, and so I think, uh, I think when I think of the things I love and the things I want to emulate, uh, I want to emulate that kind of storytelling. I, if I'm going to do a passion project, it, it should be me, you know, tearing out the remaining pieces of my brain and smearing it on every page uh, just like you know James did so uh, hopefully uh, people out there that are fans of The Crow uh, hopefully you give this book a shot um, it's definitely you know not uh, on the same level of talent for sure but it's definitely inspired by that kind of storytelling a uh, very non-linear but and very personal and also changing things up every once in a while to give you something fresh and new as you're on this journey with these characters. I'm starting to understand a bit more now. This young man has passion. Passion is what drives him. Emotion, too. For someone who claims to not be a part of humanity, he certainly conveys their most beautiful parts. Is that egotistical to say? I just saw a video the other day about uh, the one, the rock balancing one. And just, just, it's just balancing rocks, but Rocks clearly shouldn't balance, and it just it's just a time lapse of see just trying different combinations of these rocks together, just putting them on top, and they don't balance, and because they don't balance, because they shouldn't balance, but then he just keeps keeps putting, keeps trying, and just keeps putting like there's a rock like this, and there's a rock like this, and he puts them like that, and of course it doesn't balance. Rocks don't bounce like that. Um, but it's, as is so much of what he does, it's just, of course rocks don't really bounce like that. Of course you can't, of course you can't be an artist if you don't know, if you don't have the bit of your mind which knows what art is. That's, that's obvious, but just keep, just forgets that that's a fact, forgets to listen to you, and just does it anyway, and then succeeds, and it doesn't, if there is anyone who could, I'm not going to say anyone who could do it, because I think, 
I think most people could do it. Even in this situation, I think most people could do it, but I don't think most people would. I think most people would see that it was impossible and stop, as opposed to seeing it was impossible and then trying to do it even more because, you know, because you've got to, because you can, because there's that little thing in you which tells you you're not allowed to not, and that's... At seek. My focus is trying to get out there and write more, create more art, things like that. Um, also, I like doing the YouTube stuff because, like I said, I'm, I'm in here. This is kind of my setup. Like, this is, you know, for my YouTube show. It's, uh, it's kind of where your head's at looking at me, filming me right now, uh, or projecting me, or however this is working out. That's kind of uh, how I did my YouTube show for a couple years. So, I would define myself, though, as an artist. And my profession is a writer and editor. And I love all of it. Um, I love telling stories. I love building worlds. I love destroying worlds. Um, you know, I love building characters, good characters. And, uh, and I like putting myself, put pieces of myself into my work. Seek is impaired. But he's overcoming that impairment. He's doing it for his own benefit because he loves to be alive, certainly. But he's doing it as a journey for everyone else's benefit. He's 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 Promethean in his in his efforts. I see. I've learned what I can, and I think I may know where my search will lead us next, computer. I just may have to run a different type of simulation for it. Let us say our goodbyes. Well, um. Thanks for this. I mean, I know I'm not really here, but uh, it's nice to have told you some of the things I've told you, and I'm I'm glad you're interested to know, um, you know, the part of you that is now trying to expand and grow. I'm I'm glad that part of you is me, and hopefully you learn from my mistakes, and hopefully you learn from your own, and uh, and do better next time. And I wish you luck, Alon. Thank you, Seek. Godspeed.